This will be an unboxing and quick review of a San Martin model SN012A GA that I purchased directly from watchdives.com. I paid $200 US, including free shipping. It was shipped FedEx and I ordered it on a Monday and received it on a Thursday. So only, what, three days shipping to the US, which is awesome. Great job, Watch Dives. So let's go ahead and take a look. So this is gonna ship in a hard shell plastic case, which is very similar to the Steel Dive and Addy's Dives uh, cases that I've received from AliExpress. So I think this is a pretty universal case that they're using. And inside the box, you're obviously gonna get the watch. I have not unwrapped it yet, so we'll go ahead and do that. And you get a couple tools here, so it looks like you get a screwdriver because this does have a screw pin bracelet. And there's a couple cards in here, watch dives. So apparently this watch is a collaboration between San Martin and watch dives. This is signed, this is not signed. San Martin card, is this signed? This is signed, well, yeah, stamped, there you go. Apparently this has a three year warranty, I believe, through watch dives and an instruction manual. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this unwrapped. I'm not gonna bore you with all this, but it's gonna ship with some bubble wrap, some foam protection here, and more foam protection to protect the bracelet. And this looks like it's got plastic wrap all around the bracelet and the case head and uh, also the clasp. So let me go ahead and get this unwrapped and we'll take a closer look at the okay, watch. Here is the watch. So as I said, this is model SN0121GA. Now this watch is available in various different variants. So you can get it with and without a date. This one obviously does not have a date, so I kind of prefer the look of the no date dial here. Otherwise, the date would be at three. Uh, it's also available in a black version and a green version. This one here happens to be the blue version. Now this is SN0121GA, and the A means that it's the original version, and the original version means that it has this additional chapter ring with the cutouts for the hour markers that you can see on the dial. Now they also make this watch in a B version, which I believe is newer, that does not have that uh, inner chapter ring. It still has the main chapter ring with the indices uh, around the dial, but it doesn't have the cutout chapter ring. Now the B version without the chapter ring is a little bit more true to the 39 millimeter Tudor Pelagos, which also does not have that. This particular watch, the A version, which has a chapter ring, is truer to the Tudor Pelagos 42 millimeter watch, which does include that cutout chapter ring. Okay, let's get dimensions out of the way real quick. So this has a bezel diameter of 39 millimeters, a lug to lug width of 47 millimeters. And it's nice that this bracelet has these inverted female solid inlay, so that does not add any width to the case at all. We have a case thickness, including the crystal, of 12.8 millimeters. And the lug width is 20 millimeters, so obviously it's easy to change out this bracelet if you want to put it on a leather strap, a rubber strap, or a NATO. Let's quickly talk about some of the features of this watch. So we have a screw down signed crown. This has the San Martin logo, their hexagon logo. This has a matte finish ceramic bezel insert and a matte finish dial. A blue hand stack that um, pretty, you know, does a pretty good job of matching the dial. It may be a little bit lighter, but I know that's been a complaint on some of the other reviews. I don't think it's too bad though, so that doesn't really bother me at all. Uh, we get a screw down case back that does have a coin edge to it. All solid steel construction, oyster style bracelet, has polished ends on the bracelet, otherwise it's brushed. Let's see what the case looks like here. So the case is brushed 
and also brushed on the sides. There's a there's a polished chamfer on the top of the case that looks pretty nice. This does have a sapphire crystal, and I'll go ahead and test that with my tester, but it is a double domed because there really isn't any distortion here. So that's got to be a double domed sapphire crystal. Let's test this crystal with our diamond tester. And yeah, it looks like it is testing a sapphire. But we already knew that. And just for an example, let's take a look at a Seiko. So this is a Seiko chronograph, which hardlex, which is just mineral. So this should not test a sapphire. And it is not, it's not getting into the yellow. And here, another example is this, this is an Invicta. Again, should be a mineral crystal. And this is not testing a sapphire either. This watch gets a lot of compliments for the clasp assembly. So this is a newer clasp from San Martin. You can see it has an applied logo. Fully milled uh, scissor hinge here. Has a push to release. And the nice thing about this is the micro adjustment. So it has a quick micro adjustment similar to guide lock and other variants of that. So this has a little button that you push and then you can slide this in and out. So let's see if I can demonstrate that on camera for you. I'm gonna push on that lever where it says push and I should be able to slide this out. Yep, so it slid out and then to adjust it, I think I could simply just push it back in one click at a time. So let's see, you get one, two, three, four, five, five. So you got five adjustments there. This bracelet does have screw pins. So that's one of the advantages of this newer model, I guess, or more expensive model, is that you're not getting that uh, pin and collet system that is so hard to adjust. I just see a lot of reviews on that. People really complain about that pin and collar system on some of the less expensive San Martins, but this one actually has uh, screw pins. So that's a big plus. I guess maybe that's worth a little, a little extra money by itself. So what else can we talk about? So this has a TMI branded NH35 movement, which is obviously made by Seiko um, this does have the 35, so this does have a ghost date position. They're not using the NH38, so I know another complaint is some people don't like that. They wish that San Martin, at, especially at this price point, would use the NH38. I don't really have a problem with that. I mean, no date. Um, I just have to pull the crown to adjust the time. Either way, not a big deal for me. The logo is their hexagon logo. It's printed, I don't know, maybe I'd prefer to see something applied, like on their BB58 version. Bezel rotation, so this has a really nice bezel. It looks like it's really well aligned, and the bezel action on this thing really gets great reviews as well. So yeah, very, very nice and crisp. Really no backplate at all, feels pretty solid. Yeah, very nice bezel action. So very satisfied with that. Definitely better than anything I have from Steel Dive or Addy's Dive. But again, this is a $200 watch versus $50 watch. So big difference there. Uh, screw down crown. And if I go to that first position, it's going to be our date position. And I didn't check to see where they place the hands, if it's still at midnight or not. I guess that's really not a concern because I won't be doing any quick date changes. So don't have to really worry about that. I'm going to go ahead and pull to position two. You can see that this movement does hack. So it's hacking, it's automatic winding, and also manual winding. To manual wind, you're going to go back to the very first position. And you'll hear that winding and feel it. And we'll go ahead and screw this back in. Be very careful not to cross thread it. We wanna just put a little bit of pressure, find those threads. And if you feel resistance and doesn't feel like it's going, stop, back it out and retry it. You don't wanna damage the threads on the crown tube. There you go, very nice. 
All right, what else can we talk about? Well, obviously loom. You know, people love the loom and it's got great loom. So let me go ahead and do a loom shot for you. Well, the loom, as we know, is really excellent on this watch. BGW9 loom on the bezel insert, dial and handset. So very nice, very nice, very happy with that. And here's a wrist shot on my six and a half inch wrist. Now I have not sized this bracelet yet, but here's an idea of what it would look like. Okay, do I dare put this thing on the time grapher? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. I gave it a healthy wind in the dial up position. Looks like we have a nice uh, healthy amplitude, 289, 290. Bead error of only 0 0.2 milliseconds, so that's certainly acceptable. Uh, obviously, this is a 21,600 beats per hour movement. I've got my lift angle set to the proper 53 degrees. And been letting this run a little bit here, and we're about plus 8 seconds, so it's pretty consistent. Not jumping around all over the place. I don't know if these are regulated by San Martin or not. Um, but I will wear this watch, and if it needs any regulation, I will go ahead and open it up and try to do that. But, you know, plus 7, plus 8, plus 9 is certainly within tolerance, so I don't have any complaint with that. And if, obviously on the wrist, it might be a little bit different in different dial positions. I'm not going to go through the trouble of showing all those different positions. But uh, dial up, we're looking at plus 9. Not too bad. Now, I'll be honest. This is the most I've paid for a Chinese watch. I have uh, purchased several steel dives, Addy's dives from AliExpress, you know, that were under $50 or in the $50 price range. So pretty much every watch I've purchased so far, which has been a lot on AliExpress, has usually been in the $50 to $60 range. This one's $200. Now, I was a little hesitant to spend that kind of money on a Chinese brand watch. Now, obviously I've watched a lot of reviews on this watch. Um, it's very popular on YouTube. But you know, when you get into $200 price range, we're talking Orients, we're talking Seiko 5. There's a lot of other options out there. And so I thought, well, I don't know if I wanna spend that kind of money on this watch. But you know what? I really wanted a Tudor Pelagos homage style watch. And I felt like this is probably the best one for the money. So I decided just to splurge a little bit and give this one a shot. And you know what, if I really enjoy it and like wearing it, then maybe, just maybe, I will make the move to an authentic tutor. Is this watch worth $200? Well, I think it's a nice watch and I love the look. I'm a big fan of tutor watches. I love the snowflake hands. I love the square hour markers. So I really love everything about the look of this watch. Obviously, it is a Pelagos homage, but is it worth $200? Well, there are some other brands out there. I think Thorne is one of them. Uh, maybe Seastern has some Pelagos homages as well. I think this is the best out of the bunch as far as the looks, though. I really like that this has a, at least a a signed crown. I think the thorn crown is unsigned and that kind of bothers me. I think it just kind of cheapens the look of the watch if there is no signed crown. But again, is it worth $200? Like I said earlier, this is Orient watch pricing. This is Seiko 5 pricing. Um, you know, 300 meters of water resistance I don't know if I trust that. I don't know if I would trust taking this into a swimming pool. I'm sure it's okay. Definitely wouldn't dive with it. Not that I dive. But the reason I have an issue with price is that when we compare it to some other brands, especially Steel Dive, and let's talk about an SD 1953, right? Which is probably, in my opinion, now I'm kind of new to the AliExpress game here, but in my opinion, this is probably the best watch that you can get for your money on AliExpress. We're talking about a Rolex Submariner homage with the same movement, NH35, the same loom. Uh, this has a fully loomed bezel and dial just like the Pelagos homage. 
stainless steel construction, sapphire crystal, screw down crown, screw down case back. Similar water resistance rating. And you can get this watch on sale for usually under $60. So we've got a $60 watch compared to a $200 watch. You know, material wise, it's about the same. I don't think San Martin's, you know, got any expensive or more expensive materials in this watch. You know, they both have ceramic bezel inserts. Now, they do make a titanium version of this San Martin. This one happens to be the steel. I didn't want to pay the extra money or risk getting more scratches. I guess the titanium is a little softer and scratches easier. But we've got a $60 watch compared to a $200 watch. That's a big price difference. Big price difference. I can almost get four of these for the price of this. And I don't know that this is that much better in quality. I don't know. You tell me in the comments. Now, I don't have any buyer's remorse because I wanted a Tudor Pelagos homage watch, and I think this is the best one that I've seen. Now, maybe, Steel Dive, if you're listening, maybe you can make one, right? And you could probably make one for half the cost of what this is going to cost. I'd buy those different colorways. Please, Steel Dive, think about that. Anyways, it's a nice watch. I don't have any buyer's remorse. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. So there you go. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And thank you for watching.